us our safety instructions. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, please listen to the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, please exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two doors to your right, and then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by the exit signs. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross Granville Street, which is the street that runs beside our building, to our parking lot to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide additional direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway, where we will all remain until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an, ex an acceptable escape path, please run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, please find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and lock any doors that you can. And as a last resort, and only if your life is in imminent danger, please fight. And our staff will provide additional direction and assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. John God, our Father, we give thanks for another day. Thank you for a holiday weekend that we got through safely. We ask now that you bless our minds and our hearts. We might consider the things that will make our county a better place in which to live. Through Christ our Lord, we do pray. Amen. You have received the minutes of the previous meeting of the baggage. Any, any additional corrections? If not, is there a motion? Second. Questions? All in favor of being on by the voting side, aye. Aye. All opposed? And nine events are approved. Uh, Mr. Evans, get some appointments. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to invite Ms. Michelle Edwards, our health director, to come and present uh, the latest COVID-19 effort. Good evening. Good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. I have just a quick update for you on COVID. So as of August 30th, we had 15,879 cases of COVID in Edgecombe County. And as we talked about before, now we have all these home tests that are not reportable to the health department. So those are reportable cases that we have at this time. Unfortunately, we have seen an uptick in COVID cases. So in the month of August, we did see an increase. Looking at the first full week of August, we averaged 30 new cases a day and then declining each week from 19 to 18 cases a day. So we are seeing it come down, but we have seen an increase in COVID recently. Unfortunately, we have had 160 deaths in Edgecombe County due to COVID since the start of the COVID, and our first death, as you remember, was reported April 7th of 2020. And I won't read all of these, you do have these, but the CDC, CDC has streamlined their COVID-19 guidance for the public. Um, around quarantining and exposures. So recommending that instead of quarantining, if you were exposed um, to COVID-19, you wear a high quality mask. So now instead of staying home and awaiting, if you're not having symptoms, you know that you don't have COVID. You just think someone told you you've been exposed, you've been around somebody you think had COVID, but you're not showing any signs or symptoms. They're recommending that you wear a high quality mask for 10 days and get tested on day five. Um, they're reiterating that regardless of vaccination status, you should isolate from others when you have COVID-19. So it is still necessary to isolate and stay home and stay away from those when you do have COVID-19. The recommendation is still on day five to wait to get tested. If you do have COVID, you are most likely um, most contagious in those first five days. Looking at our vaccination status, we have not increased that much. People vaccinated with at least one dose were still at 52% vaccinated. People with the initial series complete were at 48%. And people vaccinated with at least one booster or additional dose were at 25%. So I know that a lot of people have started to hear some <coughs> chatter around boosters and when, when's that coming, is it coming, have we gotten it, we have not gotten it yet. Um, the FDA has just approved the emergency use, so the state is now taking orders basically from the health department on how much vaccine that they can handle. Um, so we have put in our orders for the bivalent booster, is what it's being called. And basically what that is, it's a mixture of the two vaccines that will provide protection against the original coronavirus in the Omicron. And so right now we are waiting our delivery for the vaccine. And then once we have our vaccine, we will start taking appointments for that booster. 
When it is released, Pfizer will have a bivalent vaccine for ages 12 years of age and older, and Moderna will be for ages 18 and older. On the agenda, you see we have scheduled Mr. Ted Cole with Davenport and Company. I'll ask him to come forward. As you know, uh, you included in your budget this year um, money to um, uh, to borrow funds to purchase vehicles at sheriff's office. And so uh, we had uh, Davenport and Company to assist us with uh, putting together a request for bids. We received terms from a number of different things. And we have a recommendation tonight on which uh, thing to go with, and Mr. Cole will 
to do that for you. You do have in your agenda packet the presentation that he'll review tonight. All right, excellent. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, appreciate the opportunity to present. Um, I was just going to walk through this at a high level. Um, as the county manager said, we did an RFP. If you go to the second page of our memo, it has page one at the bottom right corner. Uh, you'll see the banks that responded to the RFP. We received 11 responses. Um, many of these banks, you will recognize their names. Some you may not, but they're all active in responding to RFPs for local government finance. Um, we've highlighted Truist Bank, which is the merge bank between SunTrust and bb and They're operating now under the name Truist as the most uh, advantageous bank, and that's ultimately going to, or proposal, that's going to be our recommendation. Um, on the right-hand side of this page, you'll see there's two columns, columns C and D. Column C says a, a BQ interest rate, that stands for bank qualified. Column D is non-bank qualified. In talking through this with staff and the likelihood that the county will not issue more than $10 million worth of debt, tax-exempt debt, in the current calendar year, you'll be well below that. Um, we can do this on a bank-qualified basis, uh, which gives us a slightly better interest rate. Um, the banks are able to get more favorable tax treatment on loans that they make that are bank qualified. So we're going to be recommending for Truist that rate under column C, which is a 3.24%. You can see the range all the way up to 4.25% as the high. Um, so there's a 1% difference from, from low to high in these proposals. Um, if you go to the next page, and please stop me if you have any questions, um, page two, we give you a little more detail on the truest proposal, uh, the prepayment language. So the county will have the ability to prepay this loan in whole at any time without penalty. Um, we, we can't do partial pay prepayments, but we can prepay it in whole. Um, or if there's an extraordinary event like insurance proceeds, we can do a partial prepayment. Um, we have to close the loan by October 13th. We um, have tentatively penciled in September 21st for closing, so we'll close well before their deadline. Um, the county is fully approved. Um, they are not going to be using any uh, attorney or counsel. Um, we'll be dealing directly with, uh, uh, with Truist and working particularly with the county attorney on documents and things of that nature. Um, very straightforward financing in that regard. Um, on the right-hand side of this page, you'll see under column B, which is our recommended approach, um, the loan details. So the loan amount, um, we've got at 467,000. Um, after issuance costs, that would give you about 452,000 of funding to spend on the vehicles and the upfit. Um, there'll be a little more than that because I don't think we'll end up at that 15000 of expenses. So there might be closer to like 457000 of money to spend on the equipment. Um, closing on 921, we'll be making annual payments on April 1, starting April 1 of 23, which is the budget you're now in. And you all, as the manager said, have budgeted uh, 125000 for that. And you'll see the payments are right at 125,000, a tad below. So it fits within the confines of what you budgeted. It's a, a little less than four year term. It's about three and a half years. It, the final payoff is in April of 26. Um, and again, the rate is fixed for the entire term unless it's prepaid. So um, our, our recommendation is at the top of the next page that is moving forward with the truest bank qualified proposal and if that is something you all would like to do, this is the only meeting that is necessary for you all. There is a resolution that was drafted that I believe is also in your agenda packets. That is the only approval necessary from you all. Uh, there's no approval needed um, from the Local Government Commission for this financing. And if, if, every, you, know, if you consider the resolution this evening, we would move forward to have the documents finalized and be in a position to close 
our, our expectation would be um, by September 21st. Any questions? Any questions? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, we're estimating approximately seven to eight vehicles, and this includes the vehicle as well as the equipment. Yeah, we, 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 we backed into how much can we borrow for the 125,000 that was budgeted. So we didn't solve for exactly how many vehicles it would fund, but we solved for how much can we borrow for the um, for the budgeted debt service in your current budget. So that's how we landed at the 467,000. So it's about 60,000 on the Yes, sir. Vehicle and equipment. Yes, sir. <coughs> and the loan money we did confirm um, can be used for not only the vehicle purchase, but the upfit and equipment. Both costs are eligible. Another question. You said we had a resolution to approve. Yes, sir. There's a resolution in your agenda packet just behind this presentation. Yes, sir. <coughs> so, you expect us to approve it right here? Yes, sir. Recommendation to adopt the resolution as presented um, for the terms as discussed. Is there a motion? Questions? All in favor, let it be nobody votes out. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it'll approve. Good. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Item C. Item C, Mr. Chairman, is uh, we have a representative here tonight from uh, Altus Group to present a request to waive the tax penalty. I would like to first invite Ms. Teresa Lewis, our tax administrator, to come forward to give you some background on this particular appeal. Good evening. I'm just going to let Ms. Elena explain the details, but I want to give you an overview and remind of the process of listing. I have um, placed in front of you guys a blank listing form, and I just want to point out at the top of that um, that it, it states return back by January 31st of 2022 for tax year 2022. Extension requests are granted to March 15th, 2022. Um, you can request by writing by the end of the listing period, which is January 31st. This particular case, that was not done, so our first communication with the office group was on February 2nd, um, and that was a plea of asking to, you know, is there, what can they do in addition to um, being they know they're late? Can we waive penalty? So that was our first communication um, with the the taxpayer. We received the listing form along with a cover letter that is dated February 18th in your packet. Um, on February 18th is when we received it. Um, and you can read along with that with the reasoning. Um, the taxpayer is still establishing its internal tax operations and through a gap in communication we missed the deadline and failed to timely request an extension. Um, so we reached out to them on February 4th and explained after our initial communication with them what they needed to do, wait for the tax bill to come out and they can appeal to the tax, the tax bill to the commissioners. Um, so because once it's you know, final, the only statute that allows you to appeal the penalty is 105.312K, which states that you are to appeal to the Board of Commissioners and the tax bill itself. And that's why we waited for this to happen. Um, and I think you have a copy of that as well. It's highlighted, power to compromise a tax bill after the receipt is computed and prepared, prepared and required by subsections G and H of the section has been delivered and charged to the tax collector. So that is what law is allowing them to speak before each night to ask for that waiver. I also wanted to give you just a little background of Edgecombe County statistics for the 22 listing period. We had 34,669 tax bills this year that listed and billed timely with $26,141,161.15. Out of that, 34,003,978 taxpayers filed late and received a 10% late listing penalty on their tax bill, totaling 68,967.25. Now, firm solar is included in that, 
and that, that copy of their meal is enclosed in your packet as well. Um, is there any questions about the process before the taxpayer speaks to you guys? We might need to raise some questions after she Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. that exemption, Prince Solar does bring in over $200,000 of tax revenue annually, and they would be present in this county for at least 30 years. You can expect to see that tax, re that tax revenue coming in. Um, I ask that the commissioners consider our good faith efforts in last year's filing to be corrected, and then our response to it, to our misfiling this year. I respectfully request a waiver of the retiling penalty. Um, what's the staff recommendation here? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, we certainly appreciate um, uh, Altis and, and our taxpayer firm, Solar, for uh, their effort in, in resolving this moving forward, and we believe that they will. However, um, we do not recommend that you uh, approve the appeal as At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, public petitions. I uh, uh, think we've had um, probably uh, how many? <coughs> we've had four to call ahead to sign up to speak. Uh, what we want to do, we're going to hear from that four yeah. first. <coughs> there are additional people to speak uh, on the and This this is a public petition. It is not a public. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. 
first we have Ms. Evelyn, Evelyn Bullock. Chairman, uh, is Mr. Nehemiah Smith Jr. who's asked to speak tonight. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Nehemiah Smith Jr. I reside at 1620 East Virginia Street, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, I pastor in Nash County, but I live in Edgecombe County. Uh, I recently returned from a disaster relief mission in uh, eastern Kentucky to help victims of flooding. Uh, I had been to Kentucky before but never to this part of the state. I still wanted to do some research on Kentucky and what it's known for. Uh, Kentucky is known for coal, bourbon whiskey, college basketball, Kentucky fried chicken, bluegrass, and horse racing. At the top of most of the list is horse racing, specifically the Kentucky Derby. 
In its 147 year history of racing thoroughbreds, no one has ever entered a jackass to run in the Kentucky Derby. Because jackasses <coughs> are not prepared, nor would they qualify for the Derby. For some time now, the spectra of school split has loomed over Edgecombe and Nash counties. Initially, robed in the, the lie of the merger, this hot button issue in our community has garnered support and disdain. I have been and am against such a move at this time. Why? I believe that it would be detrimental to our children and to the county as a whole. It's about the numbers. Edgecombe County Public Schools ranks among the five worst counties in the state for the rate of failing schools, 71.4%. I think there are a lot of factors that go into that. But should we add Baskerville, Parker, Johnson, and Fairview, the percentage goes up to 77.8%. We don't want any percentage of failure for our children. But instead of climbing out of a hole, you are proposing that we dig ourselves a deeper one should you decide to vote to change the boundaries of the existing system at this time. I'm not saying it doesn't need to happen, just not right now. Here's a novel idea. Demand that our legislative delegation revise the current legislation to read that Edgecombe County is only responsible for capital outlay projects that are within the city limits. Improve on what already exists. Concentrate on getting the county's affairs in order, including supporting our share and giving more resources to the existing system, school system, school system at least what they ask for. And then consider how we can effectively pull in Edgecombe County student residents into the existing school system. That's a thoroughbred decision. But to say that we can split the system, add more low performing schools to an already low performing system, find imaginary money to fund the venture, work from wish list rather than plans, and have success for our students and the county is equivalent to running a jackass in the Kentucky Derby. The one thing that I found out in, in my years of just dealing with people, following the masses, a lot of times in the midst of following the masses, the M falls off. And then you're left following what's left, what, what you have remains. We don't need to do this, because in this we will lose. Let's not do this and then later on regret that we did. There are commissioners here that have voted for children at each time. I thank you for that vote, and I'm hoping that all of the commissioners will vote for the best interest of the students and for the residents of Edgecombe County. Thank you. Next, Next is uh, Mr. Bronson Williams. Say good evening to the board. I'm nervous. I'm trembling. And I'm waiting to see how you'll vote tonight. But I hope that you're not going to vote to take control of four schools in Rocky Mountain. Something seems a little strange that we are wanting to, with all deliberate speed, to draw a wedge in the heart of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. A city that's right now working to build its downtown and bring unity uh, between Nash and Edgecombe County. Yet, it seems to be the priority of this commission to want to, what some say, take our children back. I spoke in July, and I was very happy with you. I do know that sometimes I come to meetings and the vote is not what I would want to have. But at the end of the day, we must live the decisions in which we make. Me being a student, a product of Nash Rocky Mountain Schools, walking the halls of D.S. Johnson, Edwards Middle School, and graduated as a Rocky Mountain Senior High Griffon. I remember my days back at D.S. Johnson and going there, there was a police officer that came to the school. Or I think every Thursday or Friday, I can't remember now. But that police officer would talk about drugs. He was a dare officer. 
showed us all the different types of narcotics that existed and what effects they could have. But beyond the effects of the drugs, he talked about peer pressure. Many of us in life find ourselves squabbling with peer pressure. What are our counterparts? What are our community people telling us about this, about that? And we find ourselves succumbing to peer pressure and ultimately getting addicted on a substance that means us harm. I hope that we will not get addicted to failure. I believe in Edgecombe County, like many of my friends that graduated from here, want to move away, go here, go there. What did I do? Stay right here, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. In Edgecombe County, at that. This is where my heart is. But I would hate for us to make a rash decision that, one, I keep hearing the notion that the money follows the children. Talk to a superintendent today. All the money don't follow the children. We talked about low wealth monies and how the county must give its expected contribution to education within the county to even continue to receive low wealth funding. Educational funding is a very interesting piece. One that we employ our school board members to deal with. They hire the professional staff. They do what needs to be done to ensure that their books are balanced and the children are educated. But when I read in the newspaper that this county sometimes has the luxury of telling Edgecombe County public schools no, but don't have the same benefit in Nash County, but yet look for Edgecombe County schools to just make miracles. Why would we expect such a thing? We need a deliberate plan for success. I still can't imagine, as I talk to some of my friends who actually work at Nash, Rocky Mountain, Nash County Schools, who with inflation, it's not going to work for a 7% supplement. When we got long-term subs in schools today, how in the world do we expect children to succeed? We have to have an educational plan that makes sense. And it starts with common sense. It starts with you seven or six to nine who are here. And, and elected by members of this county to represent everyone best interest. Not a special interest group, but these little children, these little boys and girls who oftentimes can't speak for themselves. Who are counting on each and every one of you to make wise decisions for what their life's success will be. And I just hope you won't cripple that, trying to get even, trying to get back, trying to do whatever it is, because for the life of me, I could not find a logical reason as to why the decision to transfer students must happen now without a plan. Give us a plan. I'll be the first one to get on TV, radio, newspaper, whatever it is, and talk about what we're about to do in Edgecombe County. Why? Because I believe in Edgecombe County. I am Edgecombe County. But as you think tonight, I hope that if you had an opportunity to be a part of a D.A.R.E. program, probably not, but that we don't gear to or lean into peer pressure, but we make wise decisions and be our own people. That's what strong men and strong women are. So I thank you for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you for making the right decision. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Uh, Crystal Hand. no, or else, or else delays their vote. At first, I was all in agreement, as it was my own personal opinion of the school system and the lack of resources it had for my child. I was fed up by how the system was functioning and the lack of diversity through mindsets I experienced with my child attending school. My solution was to leave the system and take my child to a charter school 
and send the other one back to Florida for school because I knew he wouldn't receive what he needed. So you would think I'd be sitting here saying, yes, let's, let's, let's split. But however, I'm sitting here saying no because I have that right and I can make my own decisions for myself, but not everyone can speak on their own. However, I do say no. I say no because this will further split Rocky Mount as a whole, and folks who are engaged and involved look into school systems when they decide what side of town they reside on. Individuals with vested interests decide to buy and settle where they can see growth. Edgecombe County is growing, but what we don't want to do is stifle the growth trends we're seeing now. We don't need to overburden the school systems, but allow Edgecombe County to continue to advance and develop strategies while they grow so that they are prepared to take on their additional weight. I say work with Nash and see how we can improve upon what they're doing for our kids because there are many broken homes and families, um, which leads to children that need more than just a teacher. They need a whole support system. And I don't believe that we Edgecombe is prepared at this moment to take on that burden. And not necessarily that it's a burden, but that's an extra load that we, need. we don't need to take on at this time. Transitions aren't easy, so don't make it hard on us. Um, I don't know the history of the school system, but I, what I do know is the present. And presently, I believe in my uneducated belief that we need to work together. Uh, we need to work together as a community. We need to unify Nash and Edgecombe County school system for the betterment of Rocky Mount. We can't allow politics to take power. We can't allow to play politics over, we can't, play politics over at the expense of our kids. We need practical solutions and not theories. And I do want to leave a couple of questions that I had um, that I want you to just think about as you're making this decision. How will the impact, how will this impact overall uh, how this impact our overall economic development of Edgecombe Rocky Mount? Will population shifts occur? Will the needs of the youth far outweigh the present budget? What would be the financial impact on the citizens overall? What can we do to improve the system presently as is? Will our educators be willing to transition or remain leaving the schools without qualified instructors? Those are just a few questions that we need to consider and we already have this railroad track that's a man-made man -made obstacle that's sitting in the middle of the town of Rocky Mount with two counties on each side. Let's not be a further divide to it. Thank you. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would say if there's anybody else to speak, um, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Anybody else to speak? Good day, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. I am Raymond Trevor, Chair of the Board of Education of the Edgecombe County Public School System. On behalf of uh, my constituents, the members of our board who are here, I make the same statement. We take the same position and stance. That is that we honor our moral obligation to educate all of the children within the Edgecombe County Boundary in the Edgecombe County Public School System. Thank you. Anybody else to speak? Please come forward and state your name and address. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, City Manager. I come to you both then as um, Richard Joyner. 1821 Duncan Drive. I have made my living to work with you. The Bible tells me all the time, suffer not to let you know the one come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. I do not take the development of children life. I've had the privilege to work on the design team of the Edgecombe County School System as we're looking at how we are going to uh, Due to the merger, it has been educational, it has been very uh, influential. I've had the opportunity with TJ Walker to represent our city council on the design team. 
our mayor and our entire city council has said our approval for the demerger. We realize that there's a lot to be done, but we need to start it and get it done. I also work in Canada and work with youth all my life and do not take work with youth for granted. So I'm asking you tonight to make the tough decision that we as the City Council of Rocky Mountain, that we're not walking away from you after you make your decision, but we are going to be with you because these are all of our children. And we're committed to being with you, our school board, both national and national county, until we get the best system this world ever seen that will educate our children. Thank you. And if you're not nervous, something wrong with you. Thank you. I believe in making change when you have an option. I believe in making a change in the head of the curve. We see where this is going. Nash County went to the legislature to get the change that we're making right now. Right now. We have, we, some people have come up here and think that we're talking about moving them this year or next year. What the school board is asking is for an opportunity to develop a plan. No, there's not a plan. Plan can't start until the county commissioners give them permission to do that. And how can we, with two years from now, we could be standing right here and somebody say, well, we can't do this because we don't have a plan. But if you give them an opportunity to develop a plan now, with the option they don't want the plan developed, you got a chance to look at it and decide whether you want it's a good enough plan, you can have input into it. They'll be working with the school, the uh, state board of education other officials at the state level to make this happen. I don't like the idea of selling school board short, selling yourself short, selling our teachers short, or our students short. I was a professional for 32 years working with mental health, and I can tell you, teachers don't work in that field for their money. They work because of their dedication. You, you need to really understand that. So there's not going to be a mass resignation. There's not going to be an abandoning of our children. These teachers are dedicated. These ministers are dedicated to educating our children. Is it going to be an adjustment? Yes. But why not decide to voluntarily do this rather than let somebody go back to the, to the uh, legislature and make you do it? Then you won't be prepared. Now, one of the things that concerns me as well, because we're spending 11% uh, to help Nash County to improve their capital uh, outlay. But that money can be used to improve the school system within Ashcombe County. And yes, the money does follow the students. I, I, I was 
chairman of the board of the charter school, and I know the money to the public school. So that is important too. But I'm saying, have faith in yourself. Have faith in the school. Now, I know that the recent uh, results were disappointing with Edgecombe County. But prior to that, Edgecombe County outperformed Mass County. The teacher ratio was lower. Uh, they have to, uh, they've done a lot. But yeah, this pandemic was a burden on everybody. Now, this is nationwide as far as this is as far as uh, our students uh, not being uh, losing progress in reading and math. That's nationwide. That's a recent report out this last week. So yes, I think that's an aberration. However, I think I believe in Dr. Bridges. I believe in the school board. I you all know uh, Reverend Raymond Privet. He's been working in the Acorn County school, school system. He's been uh, uh, all over the school, making the system better. And he's saying they can get it done. They're just asking for an opportunity to develop a plan. Give them that opportunity. That's all you all have to do. You don't have to dedicate the money right now. You don't have to dedicate the resources, the resources they have. And they'll be working with the state to get this done. So I'm asking that you do make this move voluntarily rather than wait until it has to be forced upon you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, I'm Lewis Sanson. 127 Midway Lane, Tallbury, North Carolina. Mailing address P.O. Box 1391, Pine Top, North Carolina. For anybody interested, I'll be three miles out of Pine Top, seven miles out of Tallbury, but they got a Pine Top, a Tall address. First of all, I'd like to say, y'all need to put a picture in the back, because with the people facing you, people can hardly hear you uh, from my uh, Africa. And it's kind of off media too. But anyway, I, I wish I had the video that I took off work and did um, over at the old, um, what's the building beside the library in Rocky Mount when the joint Edgecombe County Commissioners and the Mass County Commission met about this very issue. I think it might have been the very first meeting. Gateway function. Right, okay. I wish I had that video. But I do have all the others. So I'm kind of. I mean, I, I, I'm glad y'all gave me five minutes because I didn't prepare anything tonight because I didn't come to speak. But I'm trying to figure out, have anybody, did anybody attend the meeting? Or have they looked at videos because they're all on my page, on my YouTube page. So y'all educate yourself before you come and speak. So I, I'm just trying to figure out what are these folks talking about. I have not heard anybody say anything about um, why we're at this point. Now let me go back. Now I'm 59. I've been active in the Edgecombe County school system, the county commission. I was coming with most of the time. I was here many times. I was here by myself. In, in the school system, I challenged some schools to do PTO. I sat on the set team. I was on the Edgecombe County Board uh, 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 Advisory Committee for the school system. At meetings late at night, waiting for them to come out of closed session, work a real job like some folks need because some folks got too much hand, uh, time on their hands. And, um, but anyway, get back to the meeting. I got the meetings on my, on, 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 my, on my YouTube page. But I have not heard anybody say why we are at this point. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm, I'm kind of slow, getting you know, old, see my head getting right. But um, it was Nash County that created this mess. Now, if I understand, I, I, I was going to the Rocky Mountain City Council meetings before any of the city council members that are up there now. So I was going to those meetings. We're going to Nash County School Board meetings. Video. So again, <laughs> I don't understand why folks don't understand why we're at this point. Now, if I remember correctly, Nash County Commissioners uh, didn't want Rocky Mountain City to keep on paying the gap money. Now, that's, 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 that's what I uh, remember. And I might be wrong. I stand to be correct on anything I do. That's talking about video so you can pay it back and, you can call me wrong. But why ain't nobody talking about Nash County? Is this same energy being taken to Nash County School Board? And I like to call names, because they ain't scared. And Robert Davis was one of the main ones leading the way. Now this Senate Bill 382, from what I understand, you have no option. If you don't pay the money, then it will automatically default. Now the school board meeting, matter of fact, I went to the Rocky Mountain City Council meeting that evening. 
came back to Princeville to the meeting you all had with the joint school board, with the school board and video that meeting, and that was a powerful meeting that covered everything. And you know things are going up, so the prices then is higher now. But I'm, I'm just having a hard time trying to understand where these folks are coming from. And then, uh, and I, I don't have to go on about that because y'all know the story. And if you don't look at the video, because my videos don't lie. But when you're talking about low performance, this is nothing new. Yeah, like that just uh, started yesterday. But the thing about it is, where the problem comes in is, if you don't do anything about it, it's just like, oh my job. Production might go down or uh, 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 audit. You have to make necessary corrections. So what's the problem? These restaurants around here got uh, sour grape and you still go in there. But the main thing is, you're talking about the low performance. I have not heard of not one child that left Edstone County that was going to school that they took the, uh, the scholarship back or whatever because of low performance. So folks, I mean, I'm just embarrassed tonight at some of the things out here, especially some of the language. I don't care how you address it up, it's still messy. But I just want to put that out there. If anybody, even after this meeting tonight, I don't care how you vote, but I want you to vote for it. But still go back and look at the videos because the videos don't lie. Like I said, I work a real job. My own equipment, I mean, I don't get paid to do what some of these folks do uh, uh, media. But I take it my, out of my time, out of my resources to do what I do because I want to educate people. I don't want to tell people what's going on. I want them to look at the video and make their own decision. I can make a decision of my own, and that's mine. But you look at the video, it's like tonight. Look at the video and see it for yourself and make your own informed decision. I appreciate you all, do what's right, and I understand that you listen to the public, but it also allows in you to make the best decision. Sometimes you can't just go with the folks, you gotta make the right decision because you are elected, and let the chips fall where they lay. Anybody else? This is interesting here, you know, what we're talking about today, the merger. I'm probably the oldest one in here that's been involved with the merger of Ed uh, Edgecombe County, Harbor School System, and Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain and Nash County. Mm -hmm. I was one of the original players that sued to have this happen, to merge the system. And I can tell you, I really believe that was the best thing at that time. And, and it worked. And just as uh, somebody said that, you know, you really need to know the history and how we got to this point. Uh, I can't go through all the history, but I can tell you that uh, everybody supported, uh, everybody who was in any position to support, supported merging the system during that time because of what happened. And just to tell you what happened, how it came about, we had the Rocky Mountain School System, of course the Edgecombe County School System, and Nash County System. And as Rocky Mountain uh, grew, <coughs> it grew by annexation, annexing new territory into the city, it was customary during that time, and I was a school board member also, it was customary at that time that when you annex a piece of land in, in school system, whether it's on the Edgecombe side or Rocky Mountain side, I mean, Nash, Nash County side, that the school system uh, would automatically release those students to go to the Rocky Mountain school system. Well, it got to a point where Nash County, Nash County School Board, they decided that they were not going to release any more students to the Rocky Mountain City school system because this is history. Because uh, what we discovered was that the Rocky Mountain school system or the Nash County school system, for some reason, it felt like there was too many, uh, they were losing too many students to Rocky Mountain. 
and then um, they felt like they should have those students, and this created, uh, you know, a situation in Rocky Mountain. What happened is that the Rocky Mountain School Board uh, decided that there must be something done to try to uh, alleviate the situation. And one of the things they came up with, because at that time, Rocky Mountain City School System uh, was predominantly black. Matter of fact, it was about 80% all of a sudden black. And so Nash County decided that we'll keep all the students we're getting because the areas that were being annexed were areas that were being uh, populated by most of the whites. And this way, this is why the Rocky Mountain school system became more black because they're not getting as many white students in the system. So a group of business people let not just uh, educators, but business people felt like the best thing for this thing, for, for Rocky Mount and the area, was that we had one unified system. And so over a year, almost two years, it was negotiated and worked out uh, to bring the system together. In order for this to happen, nobody would agree on their own, so we, we sued. And as I said, I was one of the uh, plaintiffs on that suit. And, and as a result of that, of course, when we pulled in Edgecombe County or Rock Island City Schools and Nash County Schools, you had Edgecombe County Schools and you had Tarver Schools. So we made them part of the suit because there wasn't no need to take some of the students out of Edgecombe County, uh, you know, or, which were in Rocky Mountain, and not leave the other two systems out, which is Edgecombe and Tarver. So that became the suit. Uh, suit with Edgecombe County, Rocky Mountain, Nash County, and Tarleton. So you can see how <laughs> complicated this got. But at the same time, we ended up with one system, Edgecombe, I mean Rocky Mountain, Nash uh, school system. And that worked. But throughout the years, over the years, for some reason, at some point, somebody decided that this was not good and Edgecombe County is not paying enough money to support the students in the system, which we were. Uh, and as somebody mentioned, whatever the difference was between what Nash County paid for the students and Edgecombe County paid for the students, the difference was paid for, made up by Rocky Mountain. They, Rocky Mountain took that on. But as you know, as we moved down the road, somebody decided that we don't want any Rocky Mountain money involved in the system. So, when we negotiated, again, I was part of this negotiation when we went to do another deal uh, to get Rocky Mountain out of the school system, out of the national system. It was put in the bill that Rocky Mountain could not pay anything to the national Rocky Mountain school system. So, that was money to take only there. And the other thing was that Rocky Mount would have to uh, come up with another formula to put money into the Nash County School System. So this is how we arrived here today. Now part of the thing that when we negotiated the deal, and I was part of the negotiation, putting the bill together, uh, this thing about demerging was not in the bill that we agreed on. But when we went to committee meetings, we came out, it was added. This is something that I didn't agree on, but it was added. That if Rocky Mountain did not pay <coughs> a certain time, the AMD merger would immediately take place. And the other thing that was put in that I didn't support at the time, that was not negotiated on, is that anything uh, the Rocky Mountain name on it, they wanted it off. They wanted Rocky Mountain out of the name of the system to be Nash County exclusive, but it would still keep Edgecombe County. Rocky Mountain students. So this is, in summary, kind of how we got to where we are right now. But I can tell you that what you do today, uh, and somebody asked me, I had a newspaper call me, asked me, did I support uh, demerging? And I can tell you emphatically, I think that's the best thing today that we should do. It should happen. Now, 
this is somebody that also mentioned. There is uh, money does fall for students. And there are funds, there are resources that can, uh, I think, will make us, uh, get, put us in a position that we can take care of the additional students that we got. And I can tell you as far as the school system as a, uh, as a unit and the quality of education, I would put it against any other school system, County. And I brag about this from County School System as I travel around the state and even across the country. I was involved in a lot of meetings across the country where we were talking about innovative school programs. And to my, not surprised really, but to my delight, on many of those occasions, I traveled to New Orleans, traveled to Charlotte, traveled to Florida, other places talking about innovative things in education. And as I got there, one of the things that jumped out was the expert that they were talking about innovation was actually the person from Edgecombe County. That's the expert. And I know the fact that we have a lot of innovative and tremendous kind of things that we're doing in this school system. And, and I, as someone mentioned also that Yes, we did have some low-ranking schools this past year, but that's all of them. But up until this point, I still say we have one of the best school systems in the state. And I would put that again against any school system. I have confidence in the uh, H.O.M. County School Board, the superintendent, who recently, of course, was elected, uh, voted uh, superintendent of the state. So, We've had another superintendent who was also the uh, state uh, voted head superintendent in the state. So there are a lot of good things that we should be uh, proud of. And I think we're at that point now where we need to take our students. And I think when you hear, uh, look at the back as I sit there, I see that we have our uh, people from the economic development uh, arm. And I think when you hear them talk, the kinds of things that they're doing for the county, and I think the county's on the move, and I think this is going to help us. And I can assure you that there will be resources to help us when we do this diversion. Uh, I, there's from, from my vantage point, what I know, what's going on in the state, um, I'm certain that will happen. And I can, and I just hope that you don't be frightened away by some of the things that I've heard which kind of concerns me, it's obvious that people don't really understand how education is financed. They don't understand how education works in North Carolina. And they really don't understand how this will benefit Edgecombe County. Because I think at this point it will. And I will do everything I can to make sure that we get the resources that we need uh, to make this work. And I have no doubt in my mind that this will not work. It will work. So if you're going to vote on demergence, if you want my opinion, this is my opinion, I would tell you to please vote to demerge at this point. And this demerge is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a couple of years. Even if you vote today, it's not going to happen to me. And that's plenty of time to have the plan together. And I know that the school system is working on a plan right now to see what the uh, kinds of things they can do possibilities. And from what I've seen, the meetings that I've attended, there are a lot of good innovative things out there that we can do at this point with new students coming into our system. So I thank you for allowing me to babble along here, but it's a lot that's involved in this and it's not a simple thing. And I, and I hope you understand that. So please vote. Uh, of course, you're the one that we're elected to do this, but I tell you that if I had to vote, my vote would be vote for the emergency. Thank you. Can I ask speak?
last year's accountability results are really a testament to the resilience, dedication, and commitment of thousands of educators across the state. They know, as I do, that we still have a steep hill to climb and that every step matters. She also emphasized that last year's school performance grades must be viewed within the context of the pandemic and its impact on student learning and performance. Because of this, this, this disruption caused by the pandemic, the accountability report for the 21-22 school year is the first since 2018-2019 to feature all the components of the state's accountability framework, including the APS school of grade and those designations. School performance grades, as we know, are based 80% on school achievement scores and 20% on student growth. We also know that in high needs districts, that disadvantage is us. But I want to go take our attention to the data that has been provided in EDGECOM, not just one year after pandemic or during the pandemic, but from the 16-17 school year. So in the 16-17 school year, we had six schools that met or exceeded growth, and we had eight schools that did not. We continue to move, we being our teachers, our leaders, our principals, our students, and our community and parents. By 18-19, we had 12 schools that met or exceeded growth, and we had two schools that did not meet. As we look at our data from 2021, we know that they did not get letter grades, but when we look at 2021, which was during the pandemic, we look at 21-22, this prior school year, we improved. We had nine schools that met or exceeded growth, and we had five that did not. That data is higher than our 16-17. Are we pleased? Absolutely not. We are still fighting to do what is right and best for students and will continue to do that. I'm gonna read the quote that I shared, and then I will take my seat. As students and staff are engaged in rebuilding, as we did during my initial years as superintendent, we cannot ignore the global pandemic and revert back to general discussion just about data without the true context. That is misleading and harmful to our work and dedication to student learning. We are certain that we will improve our students' academic performance as we have in the past. We have a proven track record of continued dedication and unwavering support as we did during the years before the pandemic. We are thankful for the information, but we will not, we will not grade our students, teachers, or principals on a year of returning to the classroom during a pandemic. That simply is wrong and inappropriate, and I care for our students, our teachers, our leaders, and their hard work. Thank you. Good evening, beautiful people. My name is Martin Briggs. 507 is on street, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, aka the hood, Brent Street, right? Um, I didn't prepare to say anything, but I do want to just, just sitting back listening, you know, I don't really know much about much, you know, because I was in college, I was in Greensboro, just moved back to Rocky Mountain about eight months ago, you know, just catching on. So, but what I will say is this, um, I've never known an architect to start building a house without a plan. As a matter of fact, there's a prophet in the Bible, his name was he was talking to God, he said, God, he was going through a situation, he was talking to God, God, what's going on? But I, I don't really know what next to do. And God gave him a simple command. He said, write the vision, make a plan. How can you move forward without a vision that's written down on tape? If you don't have a plan, you already set yourself up for failure. Now, I wish I could not say my words. <laughs> I wish I could use the vernacular that these guys use. Y'all sound very intelligent. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, right? But what I will say is this. I would know. D.S. Johnson, right? There was Nash County Schools one time. Went to ORPO. I went to Elwich. Then I went to West Edgecombe. Now, D.S. Johnson, ORPO, and Elwich, I was a regular guy. I got to West Edgecombe, something different happened. When I'm in the classroom, they're looking at me like, you a genius. What's going on, bro? I'm a regular guy. I tell you what, 
take the EOG, I outscored the whole school system. Look it up. 2000 what? That's 2009? 2009? 2007? In 2008, 2009, when I was in seventh grade, and I took the EOG in Edstone County, at West Edstone, I outscored the whole district. In my eighth grade year, the same thing. Math, reading, everything. I was a regular guy in Nash County. And am I, am I saying that Edstone County is, you know, less the Rocky Mount, no, the Nash County school system, absolutely not, absolutely not. But I will say this: there was a there was a different level. There was a different type of, and I hate I hate to be honest, but I'm just gonna be quite frank because like man, like my man on the camera said, I'm not afraid to say anything. Right? I'm not scared of nobody. You see the because I got God with me at all times. So, but what I will say is this: if you plan to move forward with something like this, something that's big, because we are talking a lot about finances. We're talking a lot about systems and school systems and in Nash County, Nash County. What about the child, right? What about the education of the child? There's a lot of people who's been in school 20, 30 years ago, but there's not really many children in here that's going to stand up and say, hey, this is how I feel. So when you make a decision, consider the child. Consider the child. It was in Nash County school system. They've already grown and attached to these type, to these friends. And they already got this group of people. They got access to people. I mean, I, I just want to call it what it is. Like, Nash County, you know, you, you get to experience certain type of people that I grew up, again, in the hood. But because I was able to experience people that was grew up a little bit different than me, they experienced a little bit more than I have. Their parents had a whole lot more than I, mine did. I was able to wish. I was able to vision. I was able to dream. I was able to say, I'm, I'm able to become because of what I was surrounded by. And if you take these children and you move them into an environment where there's already a failing, call it what it calls spade to spade, a failing school system, and you're gonna put 1,700 more into an already struggling school system where there's already teachers overwhelmed, teachers are quitting at an all-time high. There are a lack of teachers already. And you're gonna take 1,700 kids and put them, it, it makes no sense. Logic, there's no way anybody can sit here and say that logically. Forget finances. What about the child? If we're really talking about education, if that's really what this is about, let's take finances. I mean, I know it's a fact, it's sure. Let's talk about education, though, if that's really is what it's about. If it's really about education, how can you think about your child being in the school system right now? Think about your child being in this, this predicament. Teachers are trying to figure it out in the Edgecombe County. I give them their credit. They're trying to figure it out. But if you take a trying teacher that's trying to figure something out right now, and you take and you add on to their problem. What sense does that make? It doesn't make much sense at all. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all other ways acknowledge him. Let him direct you. Don't, don't just go and start pushing buttons and saying, we're going to do this and do this and try this and try that, because you're playing with folk lives at that point. You're playing with folk lives, and we don't want to get into the predicament of where we're doing that. So before y'all make that decision, all I'm asking is that you just consider that thought. Bless you. My name is William McKinley Parker, 3826 Kansas Church Road, Talker. Lifelong resident of this home. If what happened had not happened, when it happened, what has happened would not be happening. We cannot go back and change the past, what we can learn from. I'm not the most informed, the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I'm still well knowledge aware of what has happened. I'm not naive. We have time and place we've never been. We cannot live in the past. The future is before us. We are, everybody in here, including that young man just stood here, as young as you ever be. Our children that are coming behind us are going to a time and place that we will never go. They'll go there in part because of what we did here. This nation now stands at the pivotal point. We are here because of what the founding fathers did. We cannot go back and rectify and change it. A lot of things were said, rhetoric is good, it sounds good then and now. But 
but let's face reality now. We are where we are because of some things in the past happened that shouldn't have happened, but they did happen. These children that are now in this school system, in Nash County school system, they want to always stay there. They want to leave there. Mm -hmm. By the same token, the children in Nash County school system, they are there. They want to leave there and go elsewhere. But what about those who will come eventually, if the Lord will come before them? What will we do today that will impact their lives? How long will we continue to depend on somebody else to do for us when we can do for ourselves? Hmm. I hear the rhetoric, I understand the knowledge and the fact that you need a plan. He who failed the plan is already planning to fail. That's reality. But this is planning. Planning to change what is that is not the best for our children. Again, you're looking at another system to take care of your own. I understand you don't have a plan, but yet at the same time, I hear that same God saying to us, we walk by faith, not by sight. You got to see it before you do it. You, you, you're in trouble already. But I believe that we have the same resources in the minds, brilliant minds, in Edgecombe County, that we can come up with a plan do for ourselves and stop depending on other people. As long as you depend on other people to do for you, then they control you. Their best <laughs> interests come first. Take care home. Take care of your own. It has to start somewhere. If we're not willing to take the bite the bullet and start now, take self out of the picture, put your egos aside, and think about the future. Yes, we are not the best, but can we do better? Yes, we can. If better is possible, good is no longer an option. We think we're doing good now, but if, can we do better? If better is an option. And I would say tonight, let's do what's right. Let's do what's right for the future. We, as young, we are as young as we ever be right now. Don't die and go wherever you go to spend eternity and wish I had. Do what's right. Anybody else? Yes. Dr. Evelyn Shaw Wilson. 1809, Stanton Drive. I could not sit there without making this statement that I've made. All of this that we are talking about, I decided about 2 o'clock this morning to write the history because I was here. Started in 1991, that's 31 years ago, the state of North Carolina looked at the school funding situation and found two or three superintendents in one county. They decided that's where the word merger comes from. Back then, they said, let's merge the county and city system so that we only have to fund instead of 200 superintendents, 100. Nash County and Edgecombe County, there were four superintendents. In 1991, when the topics started and the discussion came about, Nash County merged with the city district, which included both counties, Edgecombe and Nash. We all knew that. That's in two counties. Edgecombe County merged with the Tarver City and Edgecombe County. That's why we, and we decided to name it Edgecombe.
hometown to Redlands Harbor City because we had the most food. Now, I don't intend to read each word that's on my sheet, but I plan to give it to the commissioners for your history. It should be in your book. And if anybody else want a copy of it, I want the newspaper man to have a copy because I want you to print what I say what on here because this is the history. If you print anything. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the topic came up again about murder. In 2001, that's 21 years ago. I don't know where you were then. Think about yourself and think about where you were. I know where I was. I was at the table. I was in that room, gateway room for all the meetings between Edgecombe County Commission and Nash County Commission. Mr. John Farley was the superintendent at that time. And the two of us sat in every meeting. So there's no question about, oh, we just doing this tonight. We just started to talk about this uh, two, three years ago. No, it started a long time ago. Hmm. And now here we are. The murder topic popped up again in 2015. We had newly elected people on the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners, same with Nash, and we had new board members on Edgecombe County Board of Education as well as Nash Board of Education. But we did not, and the only point I want to make clear tonight, we didn't start talking about this this week, last week, or uh, two, three days ago. It's nothing like that. And you're fine to give your opinion, but before you get it, you ought to know what you're talking All about. All right, now. And where it came from and why we're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that was seven years ago, 2015. Well, June the 14th, 2016, the General Assembly submitted a Senate Bill 382. And I would have loved to have heard all of the things I'm hearing tonight and people shouting and saying, no, this will not happen. No, this will not happen. We didn't hear that. The county commissions did hear that. Nobody heard it. I don't know where we were. I know where I was in every meeting that they had. And starting February 24, 2020, Edgecombe County Commissioners and Edgecombe County Board of Education had our first real meeting about this issue. A few people were in attendance, but I want to know where were you then? Mm, come on now. February 24, 2020. And we have been meeting, we have been working ever since then. And if you got your mouth poked out, put a smile on your face so the commissioners can make a good decision. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I want to be sure to leave y'all Thank you. And that video is on my page, February 20th. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know that. I want to say that. That's our video. That's our video document. Here in East Coast Park. Greg McLeod, um, proud president of Edgecombe Community College, located at 2009 West Wilson Street here in Tarboro and 225 Tarboro Street in Rocky Mount. Uh, I didn't prepare anything to uh, say tonight. I just wanted to come and listen and see the vote, but I do want to say that I stand with our superintendent. I stand with Edgecombe County Public Schools. And if this demerger is approved, 
We say I'm ready to serve those students with their dual enrollment needs. And with the beautiful Edge Academy of Health Sciences Early College High School that we worked on together to get approved on the Rocky Mountain campus. Mm. Because currently we do not serve any of those students because they attend in Nash. And so if they do go to uh, a community college, they're going to Nash. And I believe that I can do and we can do the best job possible for those students. All right, I now. Ready. The Rocky Mountain campus is right there in their backyard. Come on, those now. students are not taking dual enrollment classes there. And I would love for them to do so. And I stand committed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Right. Is there anybody else here to speak? Hearing none, um, we will move on to the next place in this item. After that item, we will be taking up what all of you have spoken on. Mr. Evans, um, other business consideration of approval of budget amendments? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I have. Uh, a few that I would like to draw your attention to for some explanation. So if you have a question about any of them, I will sort of walk through these quickly, but please don't hesitate to stop me if you have any questions. Um, I do want to first draw your attention to budget amendment number one. Again, you'll notice at the top right corner uh, of the budget amendment, they are numbered. Uh, budget amendment number one, this is to make a correction. As you know, we were able to use some American Rescue Plan funds for a number of different initiatives and activities that you all approved. Uh, this is to make a correction from the original budget appropriation. Uh, $25,000 was put in the health department when it should be in the um, uh, aging office. You'll recall, and, and I'll be doing an update on the ARPA funded programs in just a little bit, uh, but you agreed to uh, use $25,000 of those funds to do some uh, program assistance to our senior citizens. Um, budget amendment number two, you'll see that we, uh, our health department received some additional funding to assist with uh, vaccination support. So that is uh, COVID vaccination program funding that is coming in as revenue uh, there. Uh, budget amendment number three, um, in, in particular those that have notes regarding fund balance, I want to make sure I give explanation. You'll see here, uh, we appropriated, we budgeted uh, across our departments what we expected our cost for workers' compensation to be. Uh, since the start of the fiscal year, that invoice has come in and it has been paid. So what we're recommending with the uh, adoption of this budget amendment is that 146938 be returned to fund balance because uh, we over budgeted for workers come. That is simply to give some relief to our fund balance appropriation. Um, budget amendment number five. Uh, these are funds that were received in the adoption program, promotion program in the Department of Social Services in the last fiscal year. The funds were actually received. And so we are rolling those funds forward from fund balance to current year to be used. Uh, likewise, for budget amendment number six, those were uh, funds in our Soil and Water Conservation Office, cost share funds from the state that were received, and we are rolling those forward by this uh, budget amendment. Uh, let's see, budget amendment number eight. Oh, let me back up, I'm sorry. Budget amendment number seven. Uh, you see I'm requesting some additional fund balance appropriation for other professional services line in, uh, in my office, county manager's office. And this is um, due to under budgeting and some professional services that we'll need, uh, including um, some uh, using a recruit recruitment firm to assist us with locating and identifying our next chief financial officer as well as some other things. Budget amendment number uh, eight. This is to correct a uh, budget amendment that was brought before you at your August meeting. Um, this, uh, both These are fund balance uh, lines, revenue lines within the health department and the incorrect line was used. So we are just correcting uh, that line by way of that budget amendment. Also budget amendment number nine, you'll see that our insurance and, our insurance and bonding uh, premium was paid this year and therefore 
Um, that is just a one annual payment. The balance that we have budgeted from those lines, um, requesting that to be returned to the fund balance. Um, budget amendment number 11. Um, again, we have um, uh, vehicle insurance that was paid, a little bit that we're asking we will be returning back to fund balance. We have a number of smaller uh, budget amendments there in the next section. I do, I would request that you uh, consider adding budget amendment number 25. There's a copy at your seat. You'll see budget amendment number 25. These are funds that were COVID related funds that were received in our uh, elections office. You may recall that we received, uh, our elections office received COVID funding from at least three different sources over the course of a couple of years. Mm -hmm. These were funds that were advanced to us because of that being available. Also, coronavirus relief funds that we had available to do some necessary work. Uh, we just were not able to spend all of that grant funding. So um, this will appropriate from fund balance to return the unused portion of uh, of that part. So, again, I know I'll walk through this fairly quickly, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, though? In the budget amendment. Now, uh, one of the things we probably need to do different from what we've been doing here is I need a motion that to approve one food project by. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. Question. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. aye. All opposed, to the none. The budget amendments are approved. That's all right, there, Mr. Peters. Okay. Okay. Next on the, uh, the agenda is the consideration of financial IT that will initiate the kind of merger of this from kind of projects. Uh, it's cool. We just heard from uh, citizens a reference for that. Is there a motion? Well, that, um, that, that is a very important, especially those people who started and think they're going to graduate as a group on, or they're going to graduate as a group on. And that's, that's, I think it would be 
shrewdness. That would be between school boards, and that's that's where the that's where the plan that we're talking about is that the school boards and they're talking with both school boards and the Nash County commissioners. Uh, I think they are in agreement, and I think that's a discussion that we have had as it relates to that transition in terms of that those children. We can't make, that's not a decision for this board to make. The transition of those children would be done. And I don't think we should make it as a mandatory for my motion by this board. This motion, I had, I had the manager and the, the attorney so that it would meet the criteria of the statute. That is the motion. So I don't, I, I don't believe, Ms. Harris, that we want a motion that would require them to do this. That is, that's my understanding of how this would work, is that the, the school systems themselves, the, the boards of education, and I'm of the opinion based on my conversation with them, is that they are prepared to deal with this. The transfer of students from jurisdiction, I believe, is a, is a school board. And, and that is what I have heard of the present National County School Board members and ASCO members. They are in agreement that they will, that this is possibly more than likely these children would be allowed to stay and graduate from these, those schools. That would right. certainly be my intent, is that those parents, I don't see a lot of this disturbing where the children will go. We're talking about the children that are present in the four East Cone County School System, which have never been to a school on the other side of the track that probably would transition fully into our school system. The boys will negotiate for those other students and the parents will have say so and with the school boards in terms of how those students are assigned. That's my understanding. I think the, 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 the advantage of what we have here, it's a bad bill that we're dealing with. But it's a good bill for the 32? That's right, that's right. It's a bad bill, but it's a good one for the Edge County Commission. That's right. Because it is the first time that we, this board, has an opportunity to make a decision. It was in the decision of four boards, and nobody wanted to release students. This is the first time it's been within the power of this board for us to determine the destiny of our children, of our children. You know, I've been at this for about as long as Mr. Whittingham, and I do believe that this is the time, this is the opportunity, and it's, it is our, our, this board's responsibility. We're sending the money there. 
why not keep it here? That is what I would encourage us to do. And Mr. Wood, you had questions. I've uh, got questions, questions, and just want to make some clarity. First of all, I agree that I think we need to plan before we proceed. Yeah. We invested a hundred thousand dollars last year to the Schools, and I don't think we got the plan we were looking for. Uh, we have additional costs. Are significant. We have a social cost, we have a financial cost. Um, I've sent questions to our county manager. He replied to my questions and we copied all the commissioners. Edgecombe County would take on a huge financial burden of so additional required monies to do the demerger. Um, it would, we would have to spend $2 million more a year just to equal a We'd have to spend, if we were allowed to borrow the money to fix up the schools, or the four schools in question, if we were allowed to borrow the money to provide for a new high school, and if we were allowed to borrow the money to fix up the existing Edgecombe County schools that we already are responsible for, it would, and we finance that cost, we'd have approximately four million new dollars a year that we would have to come up with. And that would be anywhere from 10 to 15 cents tax increase on our tax rate. Also, socially, we would divide Rocky Mount even more. Um, <laughs> we've worked hard for 30 something plus years, 50 years, 100 years, to, to try to unify and, and be a better community. Uh, I can't imagine being a Rocky Mount aged student in five years from now and wanting to go cheer on Rocky Mount High School's football team knowing that they cannot attend that school or can't be on their football team. That we may have had this new innovation center of high school and the athletics may not go along with it. They would go isolated. Um, we need a plan. We need to know the numbers. We need to know how to go down and we do not have uh, the question of this athletic hasn't been answered. Our Edgecombe County staff administration is working hard uh, in some challenging times, but we do have 10 out of 14 schools that are failing right now, and every other district, every other system in the state had to take the same test. I would hate to put an additional burden on our school system of four more failing schools. So we'd actually have 14 failing schools out of 18. If I was a parent, and, and, and we as commissioners were just saying, you're gonna to have to send your kids into a failing system already, and then we're gonna make it even more so by adding four more failing schools, I'd be terribly upset. Um, we need to know, we need, I have proposed and sent to the county manager and copy everyone. I think that we ought to at least survey all the parents of students who are going to be affected and let them have a, a voice through at least a survey. I know we've had community meetings. We had very little participation of actual parents of students to be affected. But if we have these students in the classroom now, can we not just send a survey home with them? Even if we got a 50% return, we would probably have a thousand voices that we could hear. Um, I think that this question came up about when we when Rocky Mountain in 382 was passed was about the gap funding. And it was all about we sending money to Nash and they building buildings in Red Oak and how that's unfair. This whole education part of it and taking our kids and being responsible, that, that really just started in, in, in the last few years or in the last few months um, about that. It was always the money. So I agree with Ms. Harris's idea that we look for compromise. We, we board members, we six who are here tonight and seven. And I would support that we petition our delegation in the General Assembly for an amendment <laughs> to 382 where we take over responsibility for the schools, the upkeep and maintenance that are on the Edgecombe County side and continue to pay our proportionate share of the Rocky Mount High. So the students in Rocky Mount currently Edgecombe County residents can still attend Rocky Mountain High School into the future. And we would take over responsibility of the buildings 
on our Edgecombe County side and pay our proportion share of just Rocky Mount High. We no longer would be sending rock uh, money to Nash County that pays for buildings in Red Oak or somewhere else. Uh, we could take the money that we're already sending to Nash that supports the debt on the, all the improvements and we could use that money to apply to the school buildings on the Edgecombe County side and we could fix them up. We will not break up Rocky Mount. We will not have to beg, borrow monies to try to find out where we're going to get this extra four million dollars every year. Um, I said we work towards compromise. We go back to the General Assembly. We consider, we ask that we take over the buildings in the Edgecombe County side. We pay our proportionate share of Rocky Mountain High. And we look for unanimity up here. We can all vote for something instead of being split. Uh, we will not divide Rocky Mountain. We will not burden the Edgecombe County unbelievably so. We're already the highest unemployment uh, county in the state of North Carolina. Where I believe the second highest tax rate, we will be by far the highest tax rate county after this. We already have one of the highest percentage of failing schools. So we have the highest unemployment, we'll have the highest tax rate, we'll have the highest percentage of failing schools. And here we are, we're going to take on 17, 1800 students and, and add four more failing schools to the 10 that we're already had. And we really haven't had the parents survey, and we don't know what the cost is, we don't have a plan. Um, we're, there's too many unanswered questions. And I don't think we need to take this vote tonight when we're visiting the commission. Such a momentous vote. We ought to all have the opportunity to be here and, and to discuss. <laughs> so I would I would pursue and support, and I hope you all would, Ms. Harris's idea of 382 being amended and we take over the school buildings on the Edgecombe County side, but not take over those children and bust up the city of Rocky. If we ask for that, that Ms. Harris is talking about, is there a guarantee that, that we, we shouldn't that? that we shouldn't ask for? It. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I mean, is there a guarantee? Maybe we I can direct try. that to direct that to um, rep, rep, representatives here. Is there a guarantee? No. Yeah. Okay, and then yeah. okay, and then secondly, um, for clarity, Dr. Bridges, you said that we had not five. So the, the 10 that they had on TV would count those four over there back now. No, no. Okay. So the 10, uh -huh. they, it is designated for performance. 80% performance. Did you pass the test? Did you not? A 20% growth. The disadvantage is high new school system. And again, we're in a pandemic. We were 12 and 2. That's what we were. We moved up to 12 and 2. Before the pandemic, we were lower than that. And then my question is, you mentioned um, uh, the schools not getting, I, I, I guess I'm just not seeing it. We're asking for what we need to do, and I think everybody in here agrees, we need a plan. We get that. But in order to get that plan, that has to be approved by this board in order to even move forward to have the plan. Say you want the plan, but you're not willing to give the Board of Education the go ahead to do that. We can't, they can't do it without us. We gave them $100,000 to present a plan. We didn't get the plan. We didn't get the numbers. We got theory. We really, we we don't have to vote tonight to, to pass this, resolu this resolution. We can ask for a plan, ask for the numbers, ask for everything that I was just talking about before we vote. I just don't think we need to go jump off that cliff and just hope that we land safe. But I, well, am I, am I? You're not missing anything. <laughs> that, that in order to get the plan, to do the plan, to attempt to get there, we have to allow them to go out and get that information. Well, they can't do that without us having to vote. Today. No, they can't. They have to Why did we give $100,000 last year? We're going to have to vote. Well, that's, now, that's, help me now. Help me. You, you exactly, <laughs> this power, I think you're exactly right. Help me now. They cannot work with uh, DHS without our approval. Am I lost here? They have to have their approval to work with DCD to make sure that everything is up above water. They have the right to work with anyone without our vote tonight. They cannot. They, am I wrong? Mr. Right. Privet, somebody has
In order for them to move forward and even create a plan, they're going to have to get the okay from this board to go ahead and do that. So why did we give $100,000 last year to ask for a plan? Oh, well, I, I think for five, 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 five we we not alternatives. Get, we probably would not get okay. that question. Let me see where you would get that. I was in the meeting in February 2020, and I recall, and I read it in the newspaper, at the joint meeting, Superintendent Valerie Bridges told commissioners that she felt that the affected Edcombe County students were better off staying in the Nash County system because of the lack of resources needed to bring them home properly. When we talked about that we wanted to plan, she said the district would need three major elements. First, they would need 12 to 24 months or more to accomplish the transition. Well, that was February 2020. We're going in 2026. We know we've had the pandemic, but that's what it said. That's when we said we give them $100,000 to start looking into it. Secondly, they would need funding for a special coordinator to oversee the transition. We did that. We gave them the $100,000 for them to hire that person. And thirdly, they want a plan that would allow the D merger to affect students in grades K through five at first and for other grades to be gradually phased in later. So what happened to that plan? That's, that, that's what they said I at think, that meeting in 2020. I think that also, I think we had a thing also where the school board presented, with us, presented to us several options in terms of what could be done if we agreed to this emergency. It's in some of the information I think that was given to us. They did give us options. Maybe some of Mr. Wood's points in terms of. I think that maybe in terms of some of the funding issues that we're talking about, um, we need to consider that, that it is our responsibility. We need to consider some of the things that we do as part of incentives. A lot of this is done. That we do as incentives, and we've taken some actions, and I will be without giving out information that we took recently. That we, as a part of incentive, would have funded all of this in terms of what we talked about. Just for to refresh some of your memories of the things that we have done. We should consider that same action when it comes to the financing of our of the education for our children. And some of what your question also raised, um, Mr. Wooden, was um, probably an increase in taxes. Uh, I think we're, we're presently sending capital improvement for those buildings. So that's not an additional cost. No, it, it would be additional it, above what we're already sending. It is what what we do, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to funding each year, is the manager presents us with the budget. Uh, we look at the budget and decide whether we're going to accept it or change it. And we accept it or change it based on uh, where our revenue is coming from. So this would create no additional burden on this. We have not raised taxes, and I don't see a need to raise taxes in this issue. So I'm going to put you in How are we going to provide for youth high school? How are we going to provide for $2 million more dollars in teacher pay? Uh, who, who? This, this is in, a, in addition above what we already sent you. So as, as as the head of the finance committee, who's been in this for 10 years and has deepened the numbers, above what we already send them, we would have to come up with two more million dollars per year just to match what Nash is already paying the same teacher. That is to assume that we will match. Well, we'd have to go in there and tell all these all the staff they're going to take a four percent pay cut. 
Um, also, we got to fund a new high school. We also, why would we take on this if we're talking about how we're not getting treated fairly on capital improvements if we're not going to spend the money to fix up the buildings? So all of that is in addition to what we're seeing. It would be $4 million a year of reoccurring costs that we would have to pay. That's if we're lucky. We don't even know what the new high school is going to do with concept. That's a projected cost. That would be a decision by this board at the time it needs to be made. That's a projected cost. That even not this board. These are the numbers that were given to us by county staff. It's not me sitting here by myself. If those numbers were given by the county manager of how much it would cost per year to do what I just said, to have teacher supplement and to build a high school that is estimated to be $8 million in Rocky Mountain and to repay, and for the eight, $7.8 million of the premise required on the existing buildings we would take back. Plus, Edgecombe County, they can't even take their own buildings already. We have eight to $10 million of needs on existing facilities. This is new dollars. This is not, not just moving money from one hand to the other. This is all new. Counties do not grow unless they invest in their schools. Our community, the east side of Rocky Mountain, which is the side that I serve, will not grow. They will continue to move out of there if we. I'm the proposing that we. County commissioners not take charge when we have an opportunity. I would suggest that we support this. Go ahead. I mean, get from the house. Well, I was saying, I, I, I support, I support what we invest in improving those schools. I support Ms. Harris's idea that we find compromise and go back and at least get a, a try to General Assembly and we pay to maintain the builders on our side. That is an investment. that mean that they're not teaching what they ought to be teaching and if we're going to invest in our schools our children ought to be involved in making making at least an effort to do better than they're doing because the teachers are teaching better than they ever taught and our school system is going to be changed when are we going to make a change in our school system for a better future we keep talking about the same thing. We, we, we need to build. We haven't done this. And somewhere along the way, we've got to stop talking and do something. And I want to suggest that we encourage the parents to send their children to school and that the teachers teach to the best of their ability and get on with this because if we don't do it now, when are we going to do it? Hmm. If we don't do it for our children, who are we going to do it for? We're going to have them children do anything for them. And somewhere along the way, we've got to stop talking, make a plan, and get on with your work. Is there any other comments from any of the board members? If not, all in favor of the motion I present, please let me know by raising a hand. All opposed? Motion passed five to one. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank you public for their input and I'd like to also thank the board for the decision they made. I think I've been in public office for 36 years. I think it's one of the most important folks that, I, that we have made history on what show. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen. This time can I like to be with us that morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Especially thank you. 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 Mr. I charge you with Hey, hey, how you doing? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, 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 how you doing? Okay, thank you, sir. Question. Uh, he's you now. How you doing? Yeah, he go. He got to go two years. He already got a degree. Yeah. I appreciate it. 
take the man. Hey, hey, good to see you. All right. Appreciate your comments, man. Yeah. All right. Check out my video. Oh, yeah. What is it? The DC in this? Uh -huh. yeah. That's a horrible sentence, man. So what now? <laughs> hey, hey. Please, girl. Make sure they don't use that release to take the test. Yeah. What time is it now? Nine. Nine. Five. You can be released. Just get down to the next one. Nine. Five. 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 Thank you.